Today, Precarious plays Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. So a few things have happened in sequence. Put me in a dangerous position, a precarious position, <laughs> if you will. Oh. Uh, uh, I believe whenever I step off of this tile again, I think another blue person is going to spawn. Mm-hmm. Which normally would be fine, except Nubswood is under attack. That's for 40 days, so I might just ignore it for now. Mm-hmm. But fucking Clan Dip, <laughs> they've spawned again. And I don't want to get in a tussle with them while trying to find the blue people, you see. I want to know what the recipe is for the clan dip, because that sounds delicious. Uh, failure. Definitely failure. <laughs> so... Good with bows, watch out for attacks from behind. Treachery? Treachery? I would suppose. So it's a spicy dip that doesn't look spicy. Okay. I'm not sure if this has happened before. Yeah. You see how one of my assassins just came back from a dispatch mission, right? Yeah. That's important. We're getting to a point where I'm starting to send a particular class of character out on missions. Mm. Okay, that's R5, and this is just R2. Let me switch this for... That's fine. No! No! This is exactly the thing that I was afraid oh. of. Oh! I think I'm... Looks like you're gonna have to go to the nubs wood. I think I might be boned, because I'm pretty Looks sure like that... you're gonna be boned. I think that I have to keep them from going to Cowdoan. <gasps> and they, if they... If they move every other turn, then that's gonna be... I'm gonna move once, and then they'll move, and then they're gonna stay there, and then they'll move again. Right? So that's... Are they gonna sack the city? What's gonna happen? They're gonna deliver mail! Oh my god, why are you trying to keep the mail from running? <laughs> I missorted the mail! Well, actually, it's probably a Moogle. Read this uh. as a Moogle. <laughs> I missorted the mail, and now the delivery man's off to Cat... Catawin. Stop that mail! Use any means necessary! I'll take responsibility! Marco, mail sorter. And you Go know, postal! And you know the, the <laughs> Moogle like slams both tiny little fists on the table in front of him and like sprays saliva everywhere. Any means necessary! <laughs> any means! Uh, oh boy, what do I I don't guess, care if you uh, have to string him up! Just stay there, buddy. Stay right there. We'll do this mission instead, and maybe uh, Clan Dip will fuck off. <laughs> I want some dip now. Okay, so can't steal, can't hunt. Don't think it matters because this is a monster, and I don't care about steal JP or steal experience, and mm -hmm. they've got a medal, so I can't steal her away anyway. But she does know Twister. She's a blue Loa. An inver... Inver Lilith. Inver hmm. Lilith. So an inverted Lilith? What's a Lilith or, usually? Or an in, in, innervating... In... No. Dark Lilith with a human heart. Mimic humans. Aww. Oh. I thought we decided they were monsters. Because when they die, they shrivel up into snakes. With human hearts inside. That's terrible. I don't want to go there. <laughs> No! Oh, my fantasy realms have been disappointing me lately. <clears throat> yes. I just keep... Alright. Here's the thing. I don't know if I can... Con if I can, can take... <laughs> I don't know if I can take control of uh, monsters that have ribbons, but mm -hmm. I'm going to try. Or metals, I should say, because ribbons are something else. So your fantasy worlds, they've been disappointing you. I, I'm talking about fantasy as in high fantasy, not just general fantastical worlds, fiction, that sort of thing. Yes. Every time I read some high fantasy, there's always, you know, one nice sore thumb of a freaking deal breaker in there somewhere. Sometimes multiple. 
And it's always like, oh, but here we keep women as pets. And I'm like, oh, ew. And then they're like, oh, but here we are very racist. And I'm like, oh, come on. And then it's like, oh, but here we are cruel to animals. And I'm like, oh, come on. You know? And, and they use these, like, really poopy things to develop conflict, and I'm of the opinion that even when everybody is being treated pretty well, there's still plenty of room for more interesting conflict. You know? I don't know. It's just... Ugh. There's always some, like, weird, lecherous dude in a bar leering at a hot elf girl somewhere. And I'm like, oh, stop. Because you're, you're reading an excerpt from a D&D &D novel, right? Okay, I'm not making an earnest attempt to get into it, though. But you so. just, you needed you needed information yeah, from that. Yeah, I, I hadn't no, read for any D&D books. For a scholarly books. reason. Yeah, I hadn't read any D&D yeah. &D books, so I just found the closest free one that's not even the first one, so I should not... I'm not using it to judge the series or anything, but it's just, mm, it's, it did not make it, it is not the whole, it is the pieces that bother me. So yeah. it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter very much whether or not it's at the beginning, middle or end of a series. It if, is not making a favorable stylistic impression. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying <gasps> to come up with. Say. You know me so well. <laughs> High five, Kamira, friend. I mean, loathsome Kamira from the dark deserts. And this one also eats the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what keeps happening. Oh, and just keeps letting me down. I'm so <laughs> tired of it. Hey, are you doing anything this Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't cool. <laughs> but that is exactly the thing. Oh, could I just cat put you in a cage for a minute? Just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Just some occult practices. No, no, nothing to worry about. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Oh, I'm too tall up here to do anything. That and uh, I think that part... And, and this D&D &D novel is just the latest example of this problem. It's not... It's not at all just because it's D&D. &D. Although I think the D&D &D novels may have certain problems just by being capital D dungeons and capital D dragons because they keep taking minutes to, you know, be like, and with such and such a bracer. It sounds much more like someone is... Um, Reading their character sheet? No, talking about a sporting event. Oh. So it's like a blow by blow of what's happening and it's mostly action. So I don't know or understand any of the characters. And maybe by now in the series where whichever number book it is, I know it's not the first one. So maybe that's appropriate because we've gotten to know the characters by now. But it's just it seems like it's constantly a, a tiny wedge of explanation that gets you from one one fight to another. And then it's just a, a blow by blow of, and so and so jumped with their mighty boots of so and so, and did this and fell silently with their boots that were silent, and so and so has wingy boots that used to do this, and such and such was levitating and meditating because they're a drow or whatever. I can't remember right now, because basically it's kind of sucking the fun out of the the D and D for me, which sucks because I like D and D. Has a lot of potential to it constantly. It's full of forgotten lore, but I'm trying to find some of this forgotten lore to enhance my understanding of the world, and I don't know if I want to go there. Faerun specifically, right? Well, yeah, but there, Faerun is so big. I must have just lifted up the wrong corner of the map, you know? It's so big. It's I... like an amusement park built for adventurers. There, there has to be some piece of it or some, some bit of the history that's interesting to me specifically because it is like there's no way they would build 
a, an immense environment like that and not include something for me because I'm a person and there are lots of people like me. I'm not that special, you know? I often wonder if it's like really necessary. Learn Twister. Um, Yay! How necessary it is to to engage with material. Like that. It's just, what am I trying to say? I think that people that are overly concerned with canon mm -hmm. lose sight of what's valuable about, like, a D&D &D novel. It's not so that way you... If you are playing in Faerun, even if you are... If you start, if you start by playing in Faerun as depicted in a particular novel, mm -hmm. there's no reason that you have to continue to adhere to that. Yeah, well, and that is one of the reasons that I was reading that book, because I'm not looking at it as a history of the planes that... I want to inhabit. I am reading it to get a feel of things like, what do people say, and how do people act towards each other? Right, sort of like how oftentimes, even if I don't have any any desire to follow like geographical uh, population trends yeah. established in Faerun, right? Like, I don't look at a map a D&D map and be like, I need this so that way I know where the humans live. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes I'll just grab a map because it has so many names for places. <laughs> yes! Or just organizations. Like, once you have the names and you see that there are this number of things interacting and pulling and pushing on each other, you can fill in the fun details and the, the juicy good stuff. And I don't know, I I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not what I found. I was expecting like a cool world full of amazing, diverse characters from everywhere, adventuring everywhere side by side and squabbling over things like magical items and territory and things like that. Not just insulting each other based on what color shorts they were wearing that day or, you know, equally unimportant shit, <laughs> you know? I just, I was like, well, this is very boring. How about we talk about something amazing? <laughs> this is D&D. &D. Oh no, all of my carefully crafted plans are falling apart. Are they? Yes. But you already learned the thing. Yes, and the thing will be of great help eventually because <clears throat> in a way, it can sort of act as like a, an AOE Matra magic. Mm -hmm. The problem I'm having right now is I thought, ah, I'll have her cast Twister on herself, and that will cut her HP and use up some of her MP. Brilliant! But mm -hmm. then it missed. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, I'll just have Keith control her again so I get another whack at it. But then it missed, and now she's free to wreak havoc across the countryside. Oh, that's probably okay. That's probably fine. Mm. Yeah, it could be worse. It could. It could be worse. Everyone could be dead. It couldn't be much. Well, that does a percentage of damage. Percentage of your current HP. Well, damage. so all right. So as long as that percentage isn't a hundred, then right. Mm. <clears throat> I see. So my situation was not at all possible. Like not even improbable. It was impossible. Say what now? Me suggesting that the party would be all dead is oh, impossible. I, it's very unlikely. I, I think that those attacks usually, like, even if you got down to one hit point, I mm -hmm. think that they typically round in such a way that it would be... You'd be fine. Yeah. Like, I don't think it can kill you. Mm. These creatures remind me of a weird um, 
weird part of the Aladdin cartoon. Did you ever watch that? The Aladdin cartoon, yeah. I remember watching maybe two episodes or something like that. And one of the episodes I watched, Jasmine got turned into a snake. Yes. You you remember that one? No way. I thought this was like really obscure. No, the Aladdin. But doesn't she cartoon. look? Doesn't she look like Jasmine Snake? Only a little bit less teal and a little more blue. I don't remember it that clearly. And now you know, Jasmine's human heart is trapped in a snake corpse that's dead. The episode I'm remembering most clearly right now, I think it involved another magical being sort of on like the same level as Genie. Uh-huh. Trying to trap everyone in a tower because it was lonely. I don't remember enough of the plot for that. I just remember seeing Jasmine, who was my favorite, turned into a snake and not looking too bad, but still being really freaked out about it. Jasmine. And I was worried for her. Jasmine always looks good. 